Hi, I'm Carrie Olson, lead social worker at Pascack Valley Medical Center, and today we'll be talking about starting the conversation around advanced directives. Advanced care planning is not just about old age. At any age or fitness level or health level, a medical crisis could leave you too ill to make your own health care decisions. Even if you're not sick now, planning for your health care in the future is an important step toward making sure you get the medical care you'd want if you aren't able to speak for yourself and your doctors and family members are making the decisions for you. Although it may be uncomfortable to think about, an advanced care plan can provide a level of comfort, knowing that your wishes are known. Sometimes decisions made in a time of crisis may not be those decisions that you'd make if you had really time to think about it. Advanced directives are an important part of health care. It helps loved ones and medical personnel make important decisions during a crisis. Having an advanced directive in place ensures that your wishes regarding your health care are carried out even when you're unable to speak for yourself. An advanced directive is a legal document that you can complete on your own that can help you ensure your preferences for various medical treatments are followed if you become unable to make your own healthcare decisions. Your advanced directive only goes into effect once your physician has evaluated you and determined that you are unable to understand your diagnosis, your treatment options, or the harm or benefits of those treatment options. New Jersey has two kinds of advanced directives, a proxy directive and an instructive directive. It's your decision whether to have both kinds or just have one of them. A proxy directive, otherwise known as a durable power of attorney for healthcare, is a document that you use to appoint a person to make healthcare decisions for you in the event that you become unable to make them for yourself. This document goes into effect whether your inability to make healthcare decisions is temporary because of an accident or permanent because of a disease. The person that you appoint is known as your healthcare representative, and they are responsible for making the same decisions you would have made under the circumstances. If they are unable to determine what you would want in a specific situation, they are to base their decision on what they think is in your best interest. Your healthcare representative can only make decisions for you if your physician has evaluated you and determined that you do not have decision-making capacity to actively participate in making healthcare decisions. An instruction directive, otherwise known as a living will, is a document you use to tell your physician and family about the kinds of situations you would want or not want to have life-sustaining treatment in, in the event that you are able to make your own healthcare decisions. You can also include a description of your beliefs, values, and a general care and treatment preference. This will guide your physician and family when they have to make healthcare decisions for you in situations not specifically covered by your advanced directive. It's understandable that this may be a difficult conversation to have. So where do you start? Some things to think about before you start having a conversation with your loved ones are what are your quality of life goals? What's meaningful to you? What do you value? What would be your trade-off or shift points if you were to get sick? What would be your treatment goals? What would you be willing to do? Once you've had time to think about what your wishes would be, the next step would be having a conversation with your loved ones. And it doesn't have to be a talk. It should be a conversation, something that happens over time. It can be like a dialogue. It grows and it changes over time. The next step would be to select your healthcare representative. It doesn't necessarily have to be the person who's the closest relationship to you. What you need to consider is if it's somebody who will carry out your wishes, they feel comfortable and able, to speak for you when you can't speak for yourself. So how do you prepare an advanced directive? Forms to complete both type of advanced directives are available from hospitals, doctors, social workers, advocacy organizations, and on the State of New Jersey Department of Health website. An attorney may also help you prepare your advanced directive. A healthcare proxy must be signed and dated by you and signed by two witnesses. It's recommended that you also notarize it in case you travel out of state. The person you choose to make your healthcare decisions for you should be someone you trust. It can't be your doctor, an employee of your doctor, or an administrator, owner, or an employee of the healthcare facility. Your advance directive becomes effective immediately after you sign it and when you can no longer speak for yourself. It is also possible to change your advance directive. You may change or cancel your living will or healthcare proxy by destroying all copies, putting your changes in writing, and by telling your family, attorney, and anyone else who may be involved in your healthcare. You must tell your doctor of any changes where they may not be effective. For more information on advanced directives, resources will be available at the end of this presentation. Again, I'm Carrie Olson, lead social worker at Pascack Valley Medical Center. Thank you for joining me on this presentation.